Just like our bodies have different organs that perform certain functions for our body, cells have different parts that perform certain functions for the cell. These are called organelles. We will look at animal cells and plant cells. Many organelles are contained in both animal and plant cells, but some are present only in plant cells. We'll start by looking at animal cells. An important part of all cells is the cell membrane. The cell membrane is a layer that protects and surrounds cells. It controls substances that flow in and out of the cell. The cytoplasm is a gel-like fluid inside the cell. It contains water, other substances, and all the cell organelles. The nucleus is a large structure inside the cell. It controls activities in the cell and reproduction of the cell. Its center contains deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, which determines traits that are passed on to new generations when a cell reproduces. A mitochondrion is an oval-shaped organelle. The plural is mitochondria. In this organelle, the cell produces energy using the process of cellular respiration, where glucose plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Ribosomes can either be floating freely in the cytoplasm or attached to an organelle called the endoplasmic reticulum. Ribosomes are shown as small dots on the animal cell diagram. Here is a closer look at a ribosome. Ribosomes are organelles that assemble or produce molecules called proteins in the cell. The next organelle we'll look at is the endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum surrounds the nucleus and its surface is covered with ribosomes, shown as dots in this diagram. These ribosomes make the surface rough. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum has a smoother surface. It is connected to the outside of the nucleus and contains tubules that extend throughout the cell. Taking a closer look at the endoplasmic reticulum, we see that both the rough and smooth forms consist of a complex network of small channels. Notice the ribosomes shown on the rough ER. The endoplasmic reticulum consists of folded membranes that act as channels to transport proteins and other molecules throughout the cytoplasm. The next organelle we'll look at is called the Golgi body. Taking a closer look, we see that it is surrounded by folded membranes. The Golgi body, which is also called the Golgi apparatus, receives proteins from the endoplasmic reticulum, sorts them, modifies some of them, and packages them into little bag-like structures called vesicles, which break off of the structure and go into the cytoplasm. As we mentioned, vesicles are little structures that detach from the Golgi body and enter the cytoplasm. The type of vesicles produced by the Golgi body are called transport vesicles because they transport materials, such as proteins, to other parts of the cell. We can define vesicles as membrane-covered structures that carry proteins, water, and nutrients around the cell, and even in and out of the cell. The next organelle we'll look at are vacuoles. Vacuoles are structures that can be found floating around anywhere in the cytoplasm. Here's one in this diagram. Vacuoles are structures that temporarily store water, other substances, and wastes in cells. Vacuoles in plant cells are usually much larger than those in animal cells, like the one shown here. Lysosomes are structures that are also found within the cytoplasm of cells. Lysosomes contain digestive chemicals like enzymes, which break down and recycle worn-out organelles. Many animal cells have little hair-like organelles on the outside, called cilia. Cilia are tiny hair-like structures attached to the surface of some animal cells. They can move together in a wave-like fashion and help the cell move around. Their movement can also be used to push materials past the cell. For example, cilia on cells on the surface of nasal passages will push mucus throughout the passages. 
A flagellum is a lash-like structure attached to the surface of some animal cells. Flagella are much larger than cilia, and there is usually a small number of these in one particular cell. They can whip back and forth to help the cell swim through a liquid. So far, we've been looking at animal cells. Plant cells can have most of the parts animal cells have, but they also have a couple more. Like animal cells, plant cells have a cell membrane surrounding them. The cell membrane is colored yellow in this diagram. But plant cells also have a rigid cell wall outside their cell membrane. Cell walls surround plant cells and bacteria. A cell wall is a tough layer outside the cell membrane. It can be rigid, which helps a plant hold its shape. It also protects the inside of the cell. A green-colored organelle found in plant cells, but not in animal cells, is called a chloroplast. Chloroplasts are found only in plant cells. In chloroplasts, the process of photosynthesis is carried out. Photosynthesis uses energy from the sun to convert carbon dioxide and water into sugar and oxygen. In this way, plant cells produce food. You can see by the diagram here that vacuoles in plant cells are generally much larger than those in animal cells. Remember vacuoles are structures that temporarily store water, wastes, and other substances in cells. As we said, vacuoles in plant cells are usually much larger than those in animal cells. In summary, we'll show you this diagram showing important organelles found in animal cells. With the exception of cilia and flagella, these organelles are also found in plant cells. You may want to pause the video, take a screenshot, and print a copy of this diagram to study from. Here's the first page of a summary of these organelles. You may also want to pause the video here and make a copy of this. Here's the second page of the summary of organelles. Here's a diagram showing that in addition to other organelles, plant cells have a cell wall and chloroplasts. Also, plant cells have larger vacuoles than animal cells. You could also make a copy of this. And here's a summary of the cell wall and chloroplasts. A copy of this would also be useful to study from.